Hi everyone, it's Vacha here from recordingstudio9.com and thanks for joining me again. And today with me I have my son Adrian helping me out uh, installing a new graphics video card for my audio workstation PC that I normally use. Now I will talk about why we are adding a new graphics card onto my PC later on and the whole concept behind it. So I thought I'll explain what sort of uh, card we got and what information we needed to get the right video card for our uh, PC. So I gave the task to uh, my son Adrian to work out. I said the first I and mean, the most important thing I need for the video card is to be silent. So no fan. So the second one is I needed for the video card to be, you know, in a reasonable uh, power so that it takes away the load from the CPU. And also, and another important thing is the budget. It needs to be cheap enough so it doesn't have to be the latest model. So we could go back a couple of years, the best one suitable for it. So he came up with the result. Which one did we get? Uh, the Gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce GT 730 so, uh, with no cooler, so silent mode and two gigs of VRAM. The, the GT 730 SL, which is the uh, completely silent one. So um, let's get it out of the box. So it comes with a um, couple of adapters that which we're not going to use and a CD and, and a bit of instruction. Once we install the hardware thing, we're going to go straight and download the drivers, the latest drivers for Windows 10 and install it. Um, obviously, before we uh, went ahead and decided which one to get, part of the process was to go into our motherboard. And this is something you need to do as well if you've got the manual of your motherboard uh, and look up if you have a compatible slot that you can actually you know, slide in and connect your graphic cards to your motherboard. And the slot we are installing it on, usually the first one, one of the PCI uh, Express slots. And according to our manual here that we have, that's a PCI Express 3.0 slot. And that's where we're gonna put in, plug it in. So while Adrian is getting the card um, in, to uh, the PC, I will talk a bit about why we are actually installing additional graphics card, even though the motherboard is quite happily can display all of the graphics uh, from my Windows app onto my big two, uh, you know, 21 by nine big screen TV. So we'll talk about that. So why do we need additional video card? when we already have a video card built into the motherboard. Well, it's all about how the CPU works and dedicates its cycles to each of the devices that it's got attached to. By devices, what I mean is like um, the video, the hard drive, the, uh, the RAM, USB connections, and so on. So what happens is if you have ever encountered uh, while you're doing a recording, some pops and clicks during your recording or your playback coming from your speakers or your headphones while you have a USB audio interface connected. Those pops and clicks are usually because of the CPU not having enough time uh, trying to service the USB communication. And one of the main uh, devices that actually hold the CPU from processing information. One of them is the video, and the second one is usually the network connections. You can get around with the internet, you can disable it within Windows, so that there's no internet connection, or you unplug the cable, or if it's a Wi-Fi, then you can disable the Wi-Fi. Usually on laptops, you can click the switch and the Wi-Fi turns off. But for the videos, unfortunately, you cannot turn the video off. What I had discovered that um, since I got the new PC and I started to do some recording, I could hear very, very faint pops and clicks in, in the recordings. And even though I adjusted all of my um, buffer settings in ASIO settings and driver settings, 
you know, it will still get those pops and clicks. So hence the reason why we are adding a video card onto the PC. I believe and I hope once I turn it on, I will find out that once we have the video card put in, they will take the load off the CPU. Not really the load, but um, you know, the cycles from the CPU. So the CPU is not waiting, you know, the, the GPU, the graphical processing unit on the video card will take care of that so that it allows more time for all of the USB communication, which are real-time communication and data processing if you are doing audio work. So with the video card, I'm hoping to eliminate those and get back on into recording. One thing I realized that my the pops and clicks did not appear to be evident when I used uh, two of my other audio interfaces that I have. One of them being the uh, Behringer FCA 1616, which I have done, uh, you know, I think five or six part series review on that uh, audio interface, as well as the Mackie Onyx Blackbird, which is right there, which I haven't done any review yet. I will do uh, very one very soon. Uh, audio interfaces didn't have that apparent pops and clicks because there are Firewire interfaces. And for that, I have a Firewire card installed inside my PC. So that, even though without any video card, it still didn't have any pops and clicks while my AudioBox 1818 VSL, you know, there was clear evidence that there were pops and clicks no matter what I did. Obviously, the main difference is FireWire card inside my PC that took care of all of the buffering and the processing and leaving the CPU a little bit more free to do and look after all of the other devices. Now, I'm hoping when I have the video card in there, you know, even my AudioBox 1818 VSL, which is a USB 2 connection, won't you know have uh, any pops and clicks anymore as well okay now that everything is in let's um, close it up plug it in and see how we go so i will see you very soon Well, after installing the video card and giving it another try to see how my Presonus AudioBox 1818 VSL was doing, if uh, that helped getting rid of the pops and the clicks, no it didn't. It's a bit upsetting because after I did quite a bit of research to find out why it was doing it and what was the problem and how I could actually solve it. I went to all of the forums, the Personas forums, and it looked like there are a lot of other people who have very similar issues, and some of them actually have even worse issues than, than I do. Just over a year ago when I actually purchased the AudioBox 1818 VSL, um, I had some issues as well. There is a, a video on it on my channel when they actually did the upgrade from version 1.2 to 1.3. Again, Personas doesn't really know their versioning system because there's three different versions within one version and firmware and software and hardware, all of those things, it's really confusing. I'm just gonna call it 1.2 to 1.3 and I have found that you know 1.2 worked much better for me and I was on 1.2 for quite a while. I used to use on my iMac and iMac running on version 1.3 um, had issues with its VSL software. So that's why I stuck with 1.2. And now that uh, my new PC is running Windows 10, it actually does not, I believe it does not support it. Uh, and it doesn't work. So though with my testing, Anything that I record, even though when I'm monitoring it, I can hear clicks and pops, but when I play it back using another audio interface, whether my Behringer FCA 1616 or my Machionix or my Mbox, it's clean. So it does record clean. There are no pops and clicks in the audio that is recorded. The pops and clicks are when it's on its playback. 
when I actually use any of my other uh, USB audio interfaces, the ones I just mentioned, as well as the Firewire one, which is my um, Mickey Onyx uh, Blackbird, it's, it's clean. Now, using those other interfaces, uh, when I record, it's clean. There's no pops and clicks. So it's the Audiobox 1818 VSL is the one that's causing uh, clicks and pops when it's actually playing back. Um, now when I actually connect the uh, Audiobox 1818 VSL to my old laptop which is a Dell which is Intel i5 uh, few years old which is running Windows 7 there are no pops and clicks even with the latest driver 1.3 installed there are no pops and clicks during recording or playback. When I connect the Audiobox 1818 VSL to my iMac, which is I think it's 2009, um, again running 1.2, there are no pops and clicks. So it's not the hardware, definitely not the hardware, because the same hardware, whether it's on 1.2 or 1.3 of the VSL driver software from Personas, um, on Windows 7 and on, on my iMac work seamlessly, clean as a whistle. But when I actually plug into my Windows 10, my new PC, there are pops and clicks. The other sad and upsetting news is that since uh, Apple released their latest OS, El Capitan, because of some changes in the core audio, Personas are no longer supporting the VSL software. And they are discontinuing any future upgrades of their VSL software. That means they're not going to develop any further. So as far as my problem of the VSL software on Windows 10, it will never get fixed. Paid, you know, 700 or thereabouts uh, dollars an equipment in just over 12 months. Now it's for any new system, it's no longer usable unless I use my old laptop or my, use my iMac. So that's for a company to be able to do that. It's very upsetting and I'm not the only one. There are hundreds and hundreds of people out there who own the Audiobox 1818 VSL and now have this uh, pop and click problem and even more with lots of other issues that will never get fixed. And there's not much response from personas of why and how. I mean, I can understand, okay, Apple changed their um, uh, core audio thing and you cannot develop VSL on Mac. Why would you discontinue on the Windows platform? You know, you still need to support the people who actually purchased and they're still purchasing uh, Audiobox 1818 VSL without the knowledge that it's not supported on Windows 10 as far as I'm concerned um, and on the latest Mac. Unfortunately, it will come out of my rack because I cannot record things that actually produce pops and clicks when I'm mixing it and monitoring it. Yes, it's recording clean, but uh, playback is horrible unless a solution comes up. But having said that, coming back to the whole idea of adding a video card onto my PC, that made it wonderful for my video editing. Um, you know, a 10 minute, 10, 12 minute video used to take half the time to render, six to seven minutes, thereabouts. Now it's done in two and a half minutes. Video previews and renderings work like a beauty. You know, I can get my video editing done so quickly and uh, without any issues as well. So um, that's one bonus. So as far as adding a video card to a PC, which you are using the built-in the, on the motherboard video drivers um, then adding a video card definitely works wonders you know the uh, hundred odd dollars that are paid for the video card it definitely works the next thing I will be doing is adding um, a power supply I already purchased the power supply uh, which has um, a silent option in it um, it wasn't cheap it was quite expensive 
but it had the option to turn the fan off in the power supply if uh, the system thinks it does not need it. So if it's cool and it's not, not drawing too much power, it actually shut off the fan of the power supply. So that means my PC will be no fan running <laughs> as soon as I installed that one. So I'll make another video on that regards to see if that really worked well or not. So I hope my burst about the personas and their lack of support for their customers. Um, I know it's a little bit out of the topic, but I thought that was the whole idea. Now it cost me so much money, even though not wasted, but cost me money, which I really didn't need to spend it being on a budget. You know, it's not really good. Plus, I hope that now you've seen how adding a video card does really help overall thing. If it was helpful enough for you, this video, give me the thumbs up. That way I know that my ranting as well as you know, my experience was helpful enough for you to make a decision whether you want to add a video card if you don't already have one. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, do a subscribe. Um, that way you always get up to date to the latest videos and rants that I... Well, this is actually my first rant on anything. Because um, anything I purchase and buy, I usually do lots of research before I do purchase them because budget is um, important. So you don't want to waste money on buying things which are not important or they're not good. Yeah, and you can also visit my uh, website recordingstudio9.com and register as a member there. Then you will have access to our project Unplugged Slow, um, which is a whole series that I'm doing videos on that as well. And until next time, as always, thanks for watching. Cheerio. Bye-bye.